Claire and Marcia are at a birthday party when Claire's father comes to pick them up. They spot another girl, Casey, and Claire's dad decides to give her a ride home instead of letting her take the bus. Claire's father is loading some stuff into the car's boot when someone approaches him. Casey suspects something is wrong when she doesn't see Claire's father in the side mirror. Suddenly, the driver's door opens and someone gets in. He starts the car's engine, but Claire and Marcia ask him to leave as he's in the wrong car. The man wears a mask and chloroforms the two girls in the back. Casey attempts to flee, but the man drugs her as well. Casey wakes up a while later and finds they're in a room with beds and a bathroom. The door opens and their kidnapper walks in. He grabs Marcia, intending to molest her, so Casey advises the frightened girl to wet herself. Marcia is dragged into the other room but is shortly returned since she took Casey's advice. Casey has realized that the kidnapper has an obsession with cleanliness and order. Elsewhere, therapist Dr. Karen Fletcher is watching the news of the kidnapped girls when she gets a meeting from a man called Barry for a meeting. It turns out that Barry is the kidnapper, but instead of the aloof nature he possessed earlier, he now has the grace of a designer. Barry walks around Karen's office, putting several things in order and asking if Karen lives alone. Karen is suspicious of this behavior since Barry knows the answer to the questions, but Barry confirms that he is doing fine. Meanwhile, the three girls ponder what to do, and Claire suggests that they attack their assailant since they can easily overpower him. Casey ignores the suggestion, citing that they have no idea why they've been kidnapped in the first place and where they are, so it's useless to make their kidnapper angry. A while later, the girls peep through a crack in the door and see a woman in a red polo neck. The woman is supposedly talking to their kidnapper. The girls scream for her attention and she walks towards the room. As she enters, the three girls take some steps backwards as they realize that the woman is their assailant. The woman promises to talk to Dennis and warns him against attempting to molest the girls. Meanwhile, Karen has a meeting with other therapists and explores the true meaning of dissociative identity disorder. She feels that this might be the answer to the unknown. Casey wakes up to find their kidnapper staring at them. The kidnapper introduces himself as Hedwig, a nine-year-old boy. Casey manipulates Hedwig into letting them escape, but Hedwig is scared of what Dennis and the woman Patricia will do to him. After Casey tells Hedwig that Dennis and Patricia are out to get him, Hedwig accidentally lets it slip that there is a safe passage in the room. Hedwig leaves and the girls start looking for the exit, eventually finding an escape vent. Unfortunately, Hedwig returns, but Casey and Marcia barricade the door. Since a nine-year-old cannot overpower the girls, Claire manages to get into the vent. Hedwig leaves and Dennis comes in, easily getting into the room. He goes after Claire and locates her in a locker room. Dennis has Claire undress and locks her in a separate room. He also makes the other girls undress and threatens to isolate them if they misbehave. Karen gets another visit from Barry. However, she notices some strange characteristics, fearing that Dennis is in control and impersonating Barry. Dennis swears that he is Barry and leaves. Karen visits the security department to see the security footage. When Barry walks over some spilled garbage, Karen is sure that Dennis is in control and wonders what his plans are. Marcia and Casey have some sandwiches with Dennis. Marcia sees an opening and hits Dennis with her chair before fleeing the room. Casey refuses to follow her, so Dennis asks her to go to her room while he goes after Marcia with a knife. He quickly finds and locks her away too. One morning, Casey is startled to find Hedwig cuddling with her. Hedwig is the more dominant alter and explains how Dennis and Patricia's plan is to feed the girls to the beast. Hedwig asks if he can kiss Casey and she agrees. Later, Dennis visits Karen, disguising himself as Barry. Karen mentions an incident where two drunk teenagers had placed Barry's hands on their breasts on a trip. This incident had traumatized Barry for days. Karen also thinks that The Beast is a story Dennis and Patricia tell the other alters to scare them. She reveals that Barry's real name is Kevin Wendell Crum, and he is the one with dissociative identity disorder. If his name is called, then he regains control of his body. Karen asks Dennis to show himself as she thinks he is the strongest of Kevin's 23 identities and the best person to take care of Kevin. Eventually, Dennis reveals himself. He and Patricia have been locked away for a while but are recently manipulating Hedwig to let them in. Karen asks Dennis if he has met the Beast and the latter replies in the negative. Hedwig takes Casey to his room to show her his music box and some dance moves. However, he notices Casey's foul mood, realizing that Casey was hoping to escape as he had mentioned that his music box was by the window painting. Casey begs Hedwig to help her and Hedwig gives her a walkie-talkie. 
Casey turns it on and hears someone on a frequency. She tries asking for help while Hedwig tries to retrieve the phone. When he is overpowered, Hedwig allows another identity forward. The new alter takes Casey to the electronics room and locks her in, saying that Dennis will explain everything. Casey has a mental breakdown as she remembers an incident from her past. Casey was five years old when she accompanied her father and uncle in hunting. Her uncle took advantage of her innocence to molest her. Casey tried to shoot him with a rifle, but she hesitated. A while later, her father died and her uncle took her in, molesting her every time he pleased until now. Meanwhile, Karen receives numerous emails from Barry asking for help. She quickly rushes to the Philadelphia Zoo where Barry lives. She encounters Dennis leaving and asks for a quick chat. In the zoo, Karen asks Dennis what Patricia means when she says the beast will rid the world of the impure. Dennis reminds Karen of a blind woman whose three altars could see. Similarly, the beast and 24th altar is real, and he is a superhuman capable of protecting Kevin and the others from ridicule and torment. He explains that he's on his way to meet him. Karen asks for a meeting at her office the next day, making Dennis happy that she believes him. Before leaving, Karen asks to use the bathroom and stumbles upon Claire. Karen is shocked, but before she can help, Dennis appears, drugs her, and locks her away. Dennis exits the zoo and buys some flowers. He walks to the train station and leaves the flowers on the platform before stepping into the train. A few minutes later, Dennis transforms into the beast. He crawls on the train's walls, swiftly exiting the train. His scent is picked up by a police dog that barks furiously, making the police officers afraid of investigating further. Meanwhile, seeing Karen rejuvenates Claire and she starts looking for an escape route. Marcia is in the next room and she finds a clothes hanger which she can use to unlock the door. Casey finds recordings of Kevin's altars and starts watching them, hoping for a clue. As the beast enters the room, Karen regains consciousness and scribbles something down. The beast thanks Karen for helping the others, but since it's here now, Karen's services are no longer required. Karen grabs a knife and tries to stab the beast, but the blade shatters and the beast crushes Karen to death. Casey finds the keys and rushes out of the room, only to find Marcia's dead body and the beast devouring Claire. Casey stumbles into Karen's room and finds the note. She calls the beast Kevin's full name, bringing Kevin to the surface. Kevin is overwhelmed to see that his altars are causing harm as he has been locked away for two years. He asks Casey to kill him with a rifle. Suddenly, Kevin's altars all resurface, asking Casey to spare them. Hedwig appears and reveals that he is now in cahoots with Patricia and Dennis, as now Casey is scared of him and cannot manipulate him as she did before. Patricia wins and surrenders to the Beast, who attacks Casey. Luckily, Casey manages to escape with a wound on her leg and the rifle. She reaches a dead end and watches the Beast crawl on the roof towards her. Casey shoots it several times, but the bullets do not harm him. The Beast draws near and starts bending the iron bars to reach Casey. Suddenly, the beast sees self-inflicted marks on Casey's torso. He stops his assault and tells Casey to rejoice as her heart is pure. He was sent here to deal with the impure, the ones who have never suffered. A zoo worker finds Casey the next day. The police arrive and investigate Kevin's hideout, horrified by everything they see. The beast finds another hideout where Dennis, Patricia, and Hedwig marvel at his capabilities and plans to change the world. Several people watch the news at a diner about the Beast's crime and his earning of the name The Horde due to his many personalities. One patron remarks that the case is similar to a guy who had been incarcerated 15 years ago, and David Dunn reminds her that his name was Mr. Glass. Do leave a comment telling us your favorite part of the movie. Hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next recap. Until next time, folks, take care and goodbye.